I have a problem in my shack. I discovered it when I wanted to decode SSTV pictures from the ISS using my SDR receiver. It did not work because I had a horrible interference on pretty much the whole 2 meter band. Obviously, there is a strong transmitter around my home. Interested in the less than $5 solution I found to reduce the problem? Hello wireless enthusiasts. Here is the channel with a strange Swiss distortion in the signal with a new video around wireless and other exciting stuff. Make sure you subscribe if you do not want to miss the following emissions. At 145.8 MHz, the ISS transmits from time to time pictures. They are easy to catch with an ordinary handheld. But I did not want to hear the pictures, I wanted to see them. So I needed to record the sound and then use MMSTV software for decoding. The ISS moves pretty fast and creates a Doppler effect that forces us to adjust the frequency. This can be done with a PC and some clever software. And it needs an RTL SDR dongle or an RSP2 Pro. I decided to use the RSP2 Pro because of its sensitivity. But unfortunately, it did not work at all. I had a horrible interference across the whole 2 meter band and had to give up. So instead, I used my IC705 manual adjustment and recording on the built-in SD card. It went okay. But of course, this was not what I wanted. Fortunately, this Spectran V6 was donated to my channel. A true beast that can display up to 240 MHz bandwidth in real time. And the whole 6 GHz fast enough to catch all signals around my house. So here you see all the usual suspect like mobile ground stations, FM radio stations, 2.4 and 5 GHz Wi-Fi. And if I key up my 2 meter handheld, you see its signal on 145.35. And here we see where the problem most probably is coming from. A strong signal around 147 MHz. And really, if I listen to my SDR receiver, the timing is the same. So we have the source of my problem. But what is it? Fortunately, we have an official register of all frequencies used in Switzerland. And we see that pagers use these frequencies. Unfortunately, they are legal. And it is my problem. So I need a filter that keeps the 2 meter band untouched and attenuates the evil signals as much as possible. Such filters exist, but are expensive. In addition, they are hard to get. They have very steep slopes and are ideal for that purpose. Fortunately, my filter does not need to support much power because it's only for receiving. So I could try to build one using one of those PCBs, a filter calculator and a few SMD parts. But I remembered an old concept I saw on Alan's channel. The quarter wave stop. Connecting a coax cable with a T adapter into the receiving path should act as a notch filter. Cool. Its bandwidth seems to be plus minus 10% around the center frequency. For sure not as steep as this commercial filter, but let's have a try. I use my Sigland Spectrum Analyzer because I have it. Of course, you can use such an SSA or a Nano VNA for that purpose. They will show the same results. If you do not have one, you find the links in the description. For all SDR projects, I use SMA connectors and therefore have a lot of prefabricated cables in my lab. They are cheap and an okay quality. The stop is easy to make. Either you cut a prefabricated cable in two or, as I did, crimp an SMA connector to a piece of RG316. This thin cable is okay for a short piece on 150 MHz. The quarter wave stop is not one quarter wave long, which would be roughly 50 cm. Because waves travel slower in coax cables, we only need about 66% of the length. This fact is called the velocity factor. The calculator says 34 cm. But because I know from experience that it is easier to cut 
than to extend coax, I start with a little longer. And like that, we can do some tests. But how do we characterize filters? We use the tracking generators as the transmitter and the spectrum analyzer as a receiver. Both scan a frequency range and are always exactly on the same frequency. First, I calibrate the setup with the SMAT piece inserted. After this step, we have a flat line of 0 dBm as a reference. As soon as we connect the stop, we get what we expected, sort of at least. We not only get one notch, but we get plenty of them because the stop also works on 1.25 or 2.25 wavelength, and so on. We are only interested in the first one at roughly 100 MHz. With this frequency and this calculator, we get the actual velocity factor of our cable used for the stop. It seems to be around 0.71. This is the value for Teflon. Also, the thicker RG142 has a similar velocity factor, by the way. If we shorten our cable, the notch moves up as expected, and we stop cutting around 147 MHz. Let's now check the filter. The lowest value is minus 40 dBm, and at 145.8, it still has an attenuation of 27 dB. The difference, therefore, is 13 dB. The difference is not big, but at least something. We see that this simple filter type is not made for such close interference signals. So let's check another typical scenario. Let's check one of the strongest FM stations around here at 103.6 MHz and create a filter for that station. 25 dB attenuation is already something. And if we compare it with the commercial filter, the difference is not significant. Of course, the commercial filter is much broader. Because I was in an experimenting and learning mode, I added the 103.5 MHz to the 147 MHz filter. And here is the curve. They influence each other for sure. But cut to the correct length, we can create helpful filter curves like this one where both stops were close to the 103.6 MHz. Just if you did not know, if we open the steep 2 meter filter, we see something very similar. Four mechanical filters in a row, each trimmed to a slightly different frequency. And also wholly mechanical. Instead of cutting to length, we have to adjust four screws. At least we can turn them back if we overdid it. Much easier than cutting. And does the filter help? We clearly see its effect on the spectrum. The pager signal is much smaller. But I have to wait for the next ISS SSTV transmission to check the effect on this signal. I'm confident that I will get some decent pictures next time they are transmitted. If we add the 103.5 MHz filter, the effect is also considerable. But more on the stations above 100 MHz than on the ones below. The commercial filter takes them all out. That is all for today. As always, you find all the relevant links in the description. 73 to everybody. And please consider supporting the channel by using the links in the description. See you in the next episode.